Hi, this is going to be a brief tutorial on how to update the firmware on our HiOS switches. The switch that we're going to be utilizing is the Bobcat or the BRS switch. This is available either as a BRS 20, 30, 40, or 50. The first thing that you will need is you will need to download the High Discovery application. This allows you to locate the switch on a network and also address it because the switches out of the box are DHCP aware but they do not have an assigned IP address. So the first thing you will need to do is uh, navigate to our customer support portal and within our customer support portal you will need to create a user account. This takes about a minute and once you have created this account you can go to the downloads portion and within the downloads section look for the high discovery application and you will want the latest version which is the 2.3.01 download this and install it on your PC the next thing that you will need is you will also need to download the latest version of iOS for the Bobcat and this is currently the 8.0 and with this simply download this extract this to a folder and the file that you will need to access and upload onto the switch is the dot bin file once you've installed high discovery assign a static IP address to the network interface that's going to be connecting to this and what you will then want to do is you will then want to run high discovery when it's connected to the switch and when the switch is powered it will scan the network utilizing that interface that it's connected to make sure that that is selected because it's not going to find the switch on your wireless network and you'll find that switch select that switch and just to verify that that is the switch that you indeed are looking to uh, assign an IP address or change an IP address to you can also signal the switch this will make all of the LEDs oscillate back and forth so once you've visually identified that that is the correct switch you can then double click on this change the IP address the subnet if you have a gateway you can enter your gateway into here you can also set that numbering as your default which allows it to be addressed very quickly. In this case, we're just going to change the last octet to a dot two, and we're going to call this the demo switch, just so that I also have a identifier um, name associated with that. So once I've done this, what I can then do is I can then open up the web browser. I will get obviously a warning because of the certificates We'll go to advanced. We're going to accept the risk because I do know that this is indeed the switch. And I'm going to log in with the admin and the private password for the admin account. Within the menu, we're then going to navigate down to the software. And you will see that the running version is 7.4.02. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that bin file and we're then going to load the bin file and drag and drop it into this field and then hit the start button. So what we have here is we have the extracted folder for the firmware. You will find all of your MIBs right here if you need to integrate this into your SCADA software. And the bin file in question that we want is this one right here and we're then simply going to drag this and drop it into there and click start so this will take about a minute to upload and we'll continue as soon as it's done so once it's done you'll see this notification right here that the software has been successfully updated and you will also note that currently it was a stored version of 7.4.02 but if I now refresh this 
the stored version is 8.0 and the running version is 7.4. So at this point the switch has the firmware stored but it's not yet running on the latest version 8.0. So what we need to do is we now need to restart the switch. So we're going to either go to restart cold start and hit OK or we can simply power cycle the switch. The net effect is one and the same. So you'll notice the switch is going to go through the reboot and this will take about two to three minutes because in the process it's also updating the firmware. By it storing the firmware and loading the firmware during the boot this prevents the switch from accidentally being bricked in the event of a comms interruption during the firmware upload. At the completion of the, um, the reboot you will need to reconnect to the switch by simply closing out of this instance and just restarting the 10.10.10.2 once the switch has fully rebooted. So we'll again have the certificate warnings because it's a new firmware so it's effectively a new instance. Again logging in with admin and private And you will now note that not only is the stored version 8.0, but the running version as well. The older version that was in here is now the backup version. And what this allows you to do is if you ever need to revert, you simply click on the restore and you will then revert back to the older firmware rev. With this, that, that is all that needs to be done. You can now make additional changes you will not lose any of your configurations as you migrate from 7.4 or earlier versions to the 8.0. The only thing that you do need to keep in mind is whenever you do make any changes within the switch, you always will need to address the fact that any changes that are made are stored in volatile memory and you will need to go to your load save and click on the save icon down here. This puts any changes into non-volatile memory and this prevents any configuration changes to be lo uh, from being lost during a power cycle of the switch. So again if I were to make a simple change as turning a port off, so as soon as I hit that set button what will happen is I will have a flashing floppy indication right here indicating that the non-volatile memory has not been synced with the running config. And I can either click on this or go to the load save. Again, clicking on save. As soon as I do, it will move the volatile memory into non-volatile allocation and this will stop flashing indicating that they are in sync. I hope this has helped. Feel free to reach out to us if there's anything else we can do. Thanks for watching.